no, no worries. So I, I just posted um, that our screen sharing for today is not working. I, I'm, I've moved to a different machine. Uh, I'm working from home today because of the coronavirus. And so we have a version issue uh, on my local machine. Uh, and so it's preventing me from sharing for some reason. Very strange, but things like that happen. Yeah, are you, uh, using, are you using a Mac? Uh, no, I'm on a Linux box, which generally always has been working. And I think this latest version of uh, Zoom, for some reason, has a sensitivity to Wayland. Uh, it's, a dis a, it's, a, it's a display manager, basically. So, Gotcha. Yeah. But um, anyway, so I did, uh, for everyone on the call, uh, first of all, good morning. It's the top of the hour. I did send, um, send out a, a, the link to the agenda. It's in the, in the chat. So we'll have to follow through sort of the old style way. Uh, so apologies for that. Um, and it is the top of the hour, so we'll get started. Uh, and we'll just have to sort of grind through it this time around. I'll, I'm sure I'll find, uh, find a fix for this after the fact. Um, so uh, first of all, thanks and good morning. Uh, yeah, we are sort of working in, a, in an odd environment here. Uh, because of the coronavirus, I'm working from home. So this is uh, a, little bit of an, a little bit of an odd environment. Um, first off, we do record this. Uh, we are recording, um, and so uh, please keep that in mind at all times. Um, off of the agenda, I'm gonna, I, I'd like to suggest that you take a look at the antitrust policy notice. Uh, that's uh, the, the second or third item right off the list. Uh, if you read through that antitrust policy, what that really says is uh, be a good person. Uh, there's a URL link with additional antitrust details uh, for Linux Foundation, if you want to read the read the uh, the, the sort of the scrutinize the, the policy itself, uh, feel free to do so. Um, as well, uh, if you're uh, fairly new, um, it's always great to to have you introduce yourself and uh, sort of looking through the list. Um, uh, we have maybe a couple of folks, and if uh, if they'd like to introduce themselves, now would be a great time. So good morning uh, to anyone who'd like to to introduce themselves. Yeah, I can start. Hi, hello everyone. My name is Ruben. Ruben. I am a um, master's in nursing, uh, nursing informatics at Duke University. And I joined the call um, mainly because I have a project that involves uh, blockchain. Um, I also am a novice um, nurse informatics. I work for the Florida Department of Health. Oh, outstanding. Uh, and where are you from, Ruben? Oh, I'm in uh, Tallahassee, Florida. Oh, excellent. Uh, great to have you on the call. Um, and say again a little bit more about your involvement with blockchain again. Oh, um, I was, um, I have a paper that's uh, um, due at the end of the semester and uh, my topic was about blockchain um, standardization. So I'm really curious. This is the first time I've, you know, really looked into it. So I'm pretty much just observing and uh, see what I can do to help. Outstanding. Uh, well, well, thanks for joining us on the call. Uh, and uh, just uh, listen very carefully going forward because we'll go through the subgroups and there some of the subgroup work that's being done now might be exactly something that you want to uh, sort of take a look at and maybe get a little bit more involved in. Uh, it may help some of the work that you're doing. So uh, great to have you on the call and, and thanks. Very much appreciate it. Um, and then uh, just as a reminder for folks that are getting on the call just now, um, I have to apologize. Our screen sharing is not working. Uh, yeah, we have a bit of a technical issue. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we're dealing with the coronavirus here in Seattle area. And so I'm, I'm working from home. And so, of course, there's always some fun issues to deal with. So uh, I did post the, uh, the link to the agenda in chat. So please feel free to follow along as we move through that agenda. Okay, anyone else on the call uh, would like to introduce themselves? Okay, uh, I, well, I do see a, new, a, a fairly new name, uh, Tomomi. Uh, did you want to introduce yourself? Hi, hi, I'm uh, Pinky. Uh, Dr. Yu here. My name is Tomomi. I'm working, not in, I'm not working in blockchain, but I would like to learn a new technology like blockchain. 
Oh, very good. Uh, and where are you calling from? I'm from uh, to I'm uh, joining from Tokyo, Japan. Oh, excellent. Uh, great to have you on the call. And do you have a specific interest in blockchain technologies? Yeah, actually, I'm, uh, my special interest is uh, drugs supply chain. Oh, excellent. Okay. Well, very good. Uh, you, you may want to uh, listen a little bit about the patient subgroup work that's going on. Uh, Dennis will be talking about that just, just in a little while, um, but that's work that uh, his team is doing. And so, yeah, you may want to uh, get a little bit more involved with, uh, with the work that uh, Dennis uh, is doing. And great to have you on the call and, and welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Abishida. Okay. Um, all right. I think everybody else uh, I, I generally recognize. So uh, great to have you. Um, so uh, just as a reminder, if you haven't already, uh, we do have a membership directory. Uh, feel free to make, make use of that membership directory. Uh, it's great to see that it's gotten uh, a little bit longer over time. Uh, it's a great opportunity for folks to uh, contact one another uh, directly and, uh, and, and find ways to connect either socially or for business reasons uh, through that. So feel free to make use of that. Uh, as well, if anyone has questions, particularly those of you that are new, we have a, a, an FAQ so that the FAQ is available uh, as well as part of our uh, uh, group here. Um, with that said, we have uh, some, I'd like to walk through some community announcements um, and uh, we have some very interesting things happening over the past week, of course, and so we'll, we'll get to that as well. Um, so the, the Hyperledger Global Forum is just finishing up. I think today is the last day. Uh, I believe John, uh, John Walker uh, was there. Uh, I think you were representing the HC SIG. John, did you want to give us a little bit, little bit of a rundown? Uh, sure. Um, so uh, it was a very good conference. Uh, I was able to attend from uh, Tuesday uh, through Thursday evening. And I think th there was certainly some uh, attendance impact, I think, with the coronavirus, but um, I thought it was still very well attended. It was my first uh, global forum. And uh, there was, you know, um, a good uh, array of uh, technology presentations, um, as well as uh, some focus on governance and uh, inclusivity. So that was actually very interesting. Um, and then I think from internally within Hyperledger, there was um, discussions about the, how to uh, level, if you will, the, the, the uh, maturity ratings across the projects as uh, some of these, you know, some of the interesting initiatives are really uh, getting traction in the industry. So that was, uh, um, that was very interesting as well. Um, I did a, uh, there was a special interest group kiosk um, that um, I attended uh, for the, the healthcare uh, special interest group and in particular the patient uh, group. And so we were, uh, that was good. You know, I'd say, you know, a dozen or so folks talking, uh, talking with them for a couple sessions and David Boswell was there uh, supporting us. Um, you know, it was a really good session. I think the, um, from a technology perspective in healthcare, I thought um, the ARIES group, which is basically a, a, a credentialing uh, blockchain that, that sits on top of uh, Indy was uh, there's some very interesting work there coming out of the British Columbia um, and as well as there's a secure T computing SGX Intel uh, has and that I think could have some very good uh, some positive ramifications in uh, in the in the healthcare area where the data is so uh, so so sensitive and so these uh, these sec secure enclave computing uh, is is you know could be worth uh, investigating. So I talked to a couple of those folks um, and invited them to both the, you know, the, the overall healthcare SIG uh, as well as the patient subgroup and uh, probably you know, more, more, to, more to come on that. Excellent, thanks John. Uh, so tell me a little bit more, uh, you had mentioned there's a focus on governance and inclusivity. Uh, explain more about what the inclusivity uh, sort of aspect of that means. Well, the inclusivity I think was within the open source community. I attended uh, just one of the, the breakouts and then Brian Ballendorf also uh, talked to uh, in a keynote about it and just um, basically making sure uh, everyone is aware um, is a part of the community to, you know, to be inclusive and to be, um, you know, is, is a part of an open source. It is also an open community and um, just to, you know, be certain 
careful of our biases and uh, open to you know both cultural and technological uh, differences. Um, so I think that was again I you know just picked up those those are the bullets that I took away from it. But um, there's definitely I think uh, within the hyperledger uh, community um, uh, uh, a direction for us all to uh, you know keep it a very open community both culturally and technologically. Ah, uh, okay. And, uh, and is that sort of the, the governance component of, of it as well, or was that a, a, a different sort of uh, focus or emphasis? Well, it, my take was that the governance is, was different in that the governance is, you know, as applied to um, blockchain or distributed ledger technologies, right? They're very to, even though, you know, a lot of the, the presentations were, um, uh, had a technical focus, the reality of, of making these, you know, blockchains operational is to uh, you have to have a mature governance policy that works on and off the blockchain and so there was just uh, notes that you know it, it's a, a function of uh, these technologies becoming more mature and actually you know being implemented that the, the operational realities uh, include governance oh, oh okay yeah okay that makes sense to me uh yeah and and I, i'm happy to hear that governance is being discussed because that was something that came out of last year's hymns conference uh, and it's really nice to see that that's uh, maturing uh, over this past year, in part uh, to your point. Uh, a lot of folks realize the value of specifically DLT, uh, but just don't, you know, don't know yet what the proper way to manage uh, th these solutions over time. And so, that, you know, the questions that came out of last year's hymns was, what's the governance policy look like? And so I, I brought that up with uh, Hyperledger Leadership. Uh, and so it's good to see that that's finally sort of coming together and I'm, I'm glad that discussion has been uh, sort of continuing and it's becoming a little bit more top of mind. So, Right. And, you, you, you know, you see that, of course, from, from the vendor side, right? So Accenture is there and you know, IBM is there and, you know, these are the, and, um, you know, big vendors that are actually rolling, rolling this stuff out. Uh, they have to have those policies in place, you know, for, um, for production. Excellent. Oh, good. Uh, and, yeah, Rich, this is Rich. I mean, just to add to that, I, I think there is a lot of focus on the technical pieces, and not enough focus on from business standpoint. I mean, uh, I mean, everyone is talking about the POCs more at a technical level than at a business level, and that's what you know just directly ties back to the policy and the, the governance piece. Because without that model, I mean, the, the technology implementation becomes that much difficult. Uh, yeah, absolutely, Ravish. Yeah, you, you're absolutely spot on. So, yeah, uh, and again, very good to hear that this is uh, a, a topic of discussion because I think it's something that we've been sensitive to over the past year. Uh, and, and, you know, it's just a natural sort of state of maturation as people understand the technology and begin to implement the technology. They start to realize, well, you know, how do we manage this going forward? Uh, if we have to do revision control, how do we do that? And, and and just sort of this natural sort of growth into the technology suite. So good, very, very good to hear that that's something that's being discussed. Uh, anything else, John? Um, <clears throat> no, I mean, there's, you know, the, the recordings of the sessions will be, you know, on the Hyperledger, um, on the Hyperledger site. And I would uh, suggest for everyone to you know, take advantage of that. There were some very good talks that you, you know, um, yeah, just you know, take advantage of, of those resources. And I thought David Boswell, um, at least for, for for our subgroup, um, did a, a really good job of supporting us. That's really oh, good. excellent. Okay, well, great. And I'll pass that along to David. Uh, he's really uh, sort of my primary contact for most of the work that we do through the SIG here. Uh, and uh, I know David well, so yeah, I'll I'll be sure to to thank him for for his hard work. Uh, and, and thank you, John, as well, for, for representing the, the uh, healthcare SIG as well at this event. Uh, the original thought plan, as we sort of segue over, was uh, we had the, the, the Global Forum uh, this week, and of course next week was going to be the HIMSS conference, which is a, a significant uh, healthcare uh, conference, and just yesterday uh, they uh, canceled. And it's been interesting yep. uh, for us uh, I, I was in, I was planning to attend uh, for, really for two reasons. One, uh, I was speaking uh, 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 through Providence Health, which is a, a fairly large healthcare provider here in the Pacific Northwest, uh, actually West Coast, I should say, West Coast and Texas, oddly enough. 
Um, and, and then, of course, uh, to represent the healthcare SIG, uh, uh, and myself and Brian Bellendorf were, were going to participate in uh, a social event uh, specifically for the healthcare SIG. Um, and it was interesting because uh, as the virus, uh, the, the, the coronavirus sort of started to spin up, and uh, I'm here in Seattle area, and of course, um, you know, all sort of seems to have started here. Um, we noticed that uh, some of the bigger players in uh, uh, at the at the conference were starting to back out uh, very very uh, cautiously, <laughs> and uh, not a whole lot of information flowing. Uh, so it was uh, almost a regular, almost a daily due diligence to understand well who's who's the recent uh, cancellation out of the conference. Uh, oddly enough, uh, Hims leadership was very. Uh, quiet about that. Uh, to me, it's a bit disturbing and maybe disingenuous that they were as quiet as they were. Um, and so um, I had to drop out uh, about a week or two ago uh, for, well, for, for two reasons. Personal reasons, my, I, my mother passed away about a week ago. Uh, so I was in Chicago for a while. And then also I happen to be immunosuppressed. And so uh, it's, it's always a sort of a tenuous thing to, to attend a conference. Uh, but with the, with the coronavirus sort of lingering, uh, I, I decided to back out of that. Uh, and I handed over some of my work to a colleague that I know over at uh, Microsoft, uh, David Holding, who I suspect uh, several of you may know. Uh, he's very well known in the blockchain space. Uh, he was going to do the work for, for to cover for me. And then, of course, he backed out, uh, his team backed out, and then Microsoft uh, totally backed out. And so it's been a very interesting process where we witnessed over the past week just sort of this unwinding of, uh, of participation at the conference. And so finally, uh, and we're very happy to, to know that uh, I think Kim's leadership did the right thing by uh, canceling the conference entirely. Uh, and uh, I could tell you it was difficult uh, to manage. Um, so, I, oh, so it looks like, is that, uh, Dennis, are you, are you doing some some screen sharing? Oh, Kent, are you screen sharing? It looks like somebody is screen sharing. I'm about to. Oh, thank you, Kent. <laughs> uh, excellent. So um, um, this is Wendy. I, I, I was also scheduled to present at the Hymns conference, and I had a week full of meetings booked that week. So I was so disappointed. <laughs> too um that yeah. it didn't go forward not sure um how best to make use of all the time that i had spent um uh, preparing for my presentation but i am happy to present to this group um so that my efforts <laughs> don't go to waste um if anyone else was um there are a few people on this call that i was scheduled to meet and i will uh, try to uh, schedule something with you offline next week. My my schedule's now wide open. <laughs> yes, I know. It's a very odd thing. Well, uh, yeah, I, I forgot to mention that. In fact, yeah, Wendy, you were going to be presenting uh, at the uh, the blockchain, uh, uh, that sort of blockchain, what is it, consortium or that first day? That's uh, correct. It's a, it's a full day event. Uh, and last year it was very popular. I think it was 100%. It just basically sold out. Uh, and I was I was planning to attend. In fact, we were hoping to meet um, at the conference. And so, but uh, you, you bring up a very good point, and I'd, I'd love to take you up on it. If if you could present here, yeah. uh, that would be fantastic. Uh, and uh, you and I can talk offline. But that would be that would be phenomenal. And of course, um, we'll make use of all your preparation for the sake oh, of, the, of the special interest group here. Great. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, okay, and so uh, that's kind of where we ended up with the HIMSS conference, uh, and so I think what we'll end up doing probably is uh, a lot of our focus will go forward uh, to the next series of healthcare conferences, perhaps several months from now as the virus sort of uh, comes and goes, uh, and we're hoping very quickly uh, and with minimal impact, and so we're just sort of monitoring, uh, you know, this sort of social event very carefully. Okay, uh, any other thoughts or questions regarding uh, the HIMSS conference? And if anyone has a, a community announcement that is in some way blockchain related, particularly healthcare related, uh, feel free to, to, make, to, to sort of voice your opinion or, and, and make your announcement now. Any thoughts? Hey, Rich, this is Ravish, um, and I'll send this information out as well. 
um, there was a recent blog that got published on, um, I believe, Red Hat, and probably will get published at IBM as well in some way or form. Um, there was a blog that was done by my team regarding IBM blockchain and uh, on OpenShift. So I will send it, send that information out. Uh, it's on Red Hat, um, you know, blogs, but very good information and kind of a tutorial for anyone to try it out also. Oh, yeah, that'd be great, Ravish. Uh, yeah, if you can send that information along. In fact, feel free to send it uh, to, to full membership. Um, that would be great uh, to share that. I will, I will send it out. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, okay. Dick Kamlesh here. Well, good, good morning. Hello. Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Very good. So actually, uh, actually, Kant is here in the uh, today's meeting, and I think we should congratulate him because he just won the Hyperledger India chapter hackathon winner, in, and he built some kind of uh, pharmaceutical kind of supply chain in using the fabric. Yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, we'll, we'll get to that in just a moment uh, as we sort of transition over to our subgroup updates. Uh, and uh, Dennis, are you still on the call? Did you? I know you need to leave shortly, but did you want to talk a little bit about uh, Kent's uh, win um, and then uh, an update with the with the patient subgroup? And uh, you're muted, Dennis. If you're still there, there I am still muted. Yes. There, he, there he is. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Yes, Kent made a great success, and he's going to present also uh, the, the the update uh, from his side. Um, I already sent it about the latest development uh, from our uh, fabric uh, use case. And uh, another point very important for us is we want to attend to the Transcelerate uh, Hackathon in the next weeks. It's really very exciting for all of us. And uh, John's participation at Hyperledger Global Forum is already uh, reported. So these are the points from my side. Unfortunately, I must leave now. Thanks for okay. giving the word for me. To me, uh, Rich. Sure. Uh, okay. Well, uh, I, I know you're time your time constrained. So, do you want to hand that over to Kent? And Kent, did you want to talk a little bit more uh, about Surely. your? Sure. Uh, your well, for, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry for your loss, your mother. Uh, I just heard it now. Uh, yes. Uh, thank My you. Condolences. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, Kent, uh, did you want to sort of take over for Dennis, uh, maybe a little bit of a, a, a summary for the patient subgroup uh, beyond what Dennis yes, has sir. talked about, and then feel free to talk a little about your, your big win. I mean, great. <laughs> Thank, you. Bye Thank bye. you, Dennis. Thank you. Thanks, Dennis. So for the patient subgroup, uh, we have uh, our latest update is that the Sawtooth version um, has um, matched our architecture expectations so um, it was very advanced already but now um, Alex who is responsible for the Sawtooth side has uh, come up with an improved version and um, our presentation a while back we were suggesting a sort of architecture where we can do the patient consent with a register and then we can ask the patient to give consent and then later permit the patient to revoke consent that is all has all been achieved now on Sawtooth, I believe. Oh, outstanding! And, and can I can I ask? And I don't know if you're the right person to, to answer, but how has your the development uh, experience with Sawtooth been uh, relative to Fabric? Well, uh, I've been learning a bit about Sawtooth as well, and trying to help Alex with the design. Now, Sawtooth is a really relatively straightforward in that. It uh, uses the Merkle tree. It's very similar to Ethereum in, in, in many ways. And with Fabric, we have something called channels. So we can have uh, several, several different blockchains, as in each channel is literally a separate blockchain. So in our patient consent design, we have three channels. So literally, not only do we have three blockchains, but we have three databases accompanying each of those channels. So... Uh, we initially we asked Alex to look at Fabric and say, "Can you do this in Sawtooth?" And it was relatively difficult for him in the beginning because 
there was only one blockchain and one database. So we asked him, okay, maybe you can literally make three instances of Sawtooth. And I think he has somehow achieved that in the background. Excellent. Okay. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, I, I, I do know there, one of the questions that comes up pretty regularly is, uh, you know, I want to implement a DLT. Do I use Fabric or do I use Sawtooth? And so I think your team is probably uh, the most recent uh, in having gone down this path. So it's, it's interesting, at least to me, uh, uh, as a proxy for those folks that have asked ask that question, uh, you know, what's the difference between Fabric and Sawtooth from a pure development point of view? So great to know that uh, we have this uh, experience very local. And I would imagine, uh, I'll just put a bug in, in your ear now for, for your team. Uh, you may want to think about putting together a presentation that that focuses specifically on you know, on that question, uh, given that we have so many people that uh, that have the, such an interest in in answering exactly you know what that distinction might be and and where the fit is. And so uh, the work you're doing here is is going to be very interesting from that perspective. So so thanks for that. And yeah, if we can uh, maybe uh, somewhere down the road when you have some time, uh, think about a presentation. Uh, that focuses on that on that question that would be very interesting yes so the uh, idea was to focus on that specific question how does fabric compare against sawtooth in a healthcare sort of setting and uh, at the moment now we're trying to refine the front end so that when we enter the data once uh, it will run in both fabric and sawtooth at the same time so in real time you can see what exactly is happening and perhaps we can try and get some benchmarks in the future. Excellent. Very, very cool. Thank you. Uh, and uh, did you want to talk a little bit more about, uh, I, I'm interested to hear about your, your win with the, the, the hackathon. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so for the hackathon, uh, the, there were three categories. One was telecoms, one was track and trace, and the other one was identity. So my team, we chose track and trace, which means supply chain. And because I have a healthcare background, I decided to think about the drug supply chain. Now, typically you would think, okay, you have manufacturing, you have the uh, distributing and the supply, and then at the end you have maybe a pharmacy or a doctor giving out the medicine to a patient. So not only did we do this forward-looking supply chain, we had some feedback loop where the patient can actually um, supply some data as well, as in adverse effect, maybe some problem with a prescription, some problem with a, a medicine, with a dosage, some any sort of information that the doctor needs to know, the patient can communicate back. And if it was an adverse reaction, then the doctor can then um, initiate some sort of what we call yellow card adverse reaction um, documentation for the regulators. So that was a sort of a fabric back end that I created. And my teammate, um, Masa, he created a, an augmented reality front end. So we used a mobile phone camera to scan a QR code, supposedly on the box of a, on the medicine. So you can scan the codes all the way through manufacturing, through distribution, and then to when, it, when the patient sees a doctor, the doctor usually gives a prescription. So at the, on the patient's side, um, when the patient scans the final medicine, there will be uh, some details, not only of the drug product itself, but also of the prescription, so that when the patient feeds back, there will be a, a hash of the prescription and some details of what was actually prescribed. Oh, very, very interesting. Very cool. Uh, and, and, and what are you using for this? What's the... Uh, did, uh, fabric. Uh, oh, fabric. Okay. Thank you. Yes and um, Swift and, uh, and AR, uh, Unity at the front end. Oh, very cool. Um, well, I'll, I'm gonna, I'll ask the, the, the same question. Uh, at some point, it'd be great if you might uh, be interested in presenting to the group here. This, this would be very interesting. Sure. Um, we are thinking of the, in the future of perhaps donating this, uh, this project code to uh, Hyperledger Labs and perhaps making a use case example if it might be useful for somebody else in the future. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think that would be that would be a great idea. Thank you. Uh, and, Perfect. And maybe like in the next uh, next hyperledger meeting, we can ask for the demo. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> that was <laughs> yes. Yes. Even the, I was a part of the organizing team of this event. 
and when i was a part of the screening team of this all the use cases and the submission yeah i and think that yeah that certificate issued on the my company's uh, uh, platform yeah uh, exactly uh, kamlesh I, i think that's a great idea and uh, if we can convince kent to do that that would be phenomenal so we can certainly make make some space for that so yeah i think that's a fine idea So before I forget I wish to give my thanks to Kamlesh and the organizing team and the panel of judges as well. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Excellent. Well again congrats uh Kent uh and yeah we'd love to to see a demo uh in the short term that would be phenomenal. Thank you. Maybe in the future. Okay, um Ravish did you want to give us an update on the pair subgroup? Yeah, sure. Um so pair subgroup I think we've been um you know as uh, shared last time we went to the from ken uh, and and uh, uh, team uh, regarding the uh, the fabric uh, the patient consent model that they put together and last uh, um, go round we we had alex present the uh, the sawtooth one so uh, i think we our teams have been collaborating especially because the you know the poc that we are uh, looking forward on the prescription management is you know the consent is going to be integral part of that so we thought it might be a good idea to go through that we um, will be will be publishing the process that we are looking at from poc standpoint i was hoping to get it done uh, before today's meeting but hopefully either you know today or over the weekend and then that's the next discussion we are about to have is go through the use case that we are talking about and you know just like the patient subgroup we will be uh, starting a poc on the um, um you know on the prescription management piece that i talked about earlier um you know just to quickly uh, again we meet every other friday not you know um not but this but next friday and the other fridays uh, from 1 to 2 um eastern time and um, you know i i feel really good the collaboration that the patient subgroup as well as the um you know the pair subgroup is doing because i think those go hand in hand and we are getting a lot of value uh, out of that collaboration and excellent. thanks to the patient patient um you know team as well excellent thanks ravish can you and can you tell me again uh, what is, what's happening over the weekend uh what's the um, we we are documenting the use case that we are looking at you know just like the the patient consent there is a use case that uh, patient team published we are going to be publishing the prescription management use case that we are looking at from payer perspective um that we can share across the you know the uh, you know across the the hyperledger healthcare subgroup so they can take a look at it if anyone is interested they are absolutely welcome to join hands with us on that excellent okay and so it sounds like uh you'll have something to show uh maybe uh sometime early next week uh through the uh through the payer subgroup uh, that defines a little bit more about the work that you're doing correct correct and i would suggest um um rick if possible uh, the the next meeting we can uh, you know in the pair subgroup uh, update we will probably uh, you know kind of quickly summarize the use case and show we'll just take 5 10 minutes uh, if possible to share that information in detail oh sure that would be that would be great okay well well thank you ravish i appreciate it uh that's a that's a fine idea Okay um so uh, regarding the healthcare interoperability subgroup Steven is not here um and uh I'll I'll share a little bit with the with you that he has uh he had an emergency uh procedure uh earlier this week uh so we had to cancel his most recent uh subgroup meeting um uh, I I'm waiting to hear back from from him uh regarding uh his health but we're sort of on hold with that uh and then uh I'll, I'll be happy to sort of uh, work with him and we'll we'll provide an update to the uh to the sig uh to membership and his subgroup team when he's back online so um uh our fingers are crossed regarding that okay uh so for ad hoc team updates uh as always uh looking for a confluence expert uh we're always looking to find ways to improve uh our sort of our workspace here our wiki Uh so I I always put this out if there's anyone that it has a, an express interest in uh in using Confluence they have they're very good at it uh and they they look at uh our wiki and see uh a need to make changes in the design please let me know 
uh, the work that we do here for the healthcare SIG would be something that would also uh, roll out to the larger uh, uh, hyperledger community. Uh, we're looking for a level of, of consistency uh, between, uh, particularly between the special interest groups. Uh, and uh, so I, I always put that out there. So uh, feel free to contact me either uh, uh, now or, or direct through email. I'm, I'm happy to, to sort of follow up with you on that. Okay, uh, and uh, for the uh, use case development team, uh, I don't see Erica on the call this morning, um, but uh, I do know that uh, we had a meeting about a uh, about two weeks ago uh, to sort of uh, reboot uh, this uh, development team. Now, this was something originally that uh, Wendy picked up. I think, Wendy, uh, we, we got that going probably uh, sometime last year after the HIMSS conference, and I think the HIMSS conference at that time had sort of informed us uh, the need for developing use cases around blockchain technologies. I think it was particularly DLT, and I think probably at this stage, uh, SSI is starting to get a little bit more traction as well. So Wendy kicked, that, kicked off that, uh, that exercise. Wendy, you wanna talk a little bit more about sort of a background on this, uh, and then sort of the segue over to Erica's work? Oh, sure. Um, so uh, with inspiration from the HIMSS conference last year, you're absolutely correct. We recognized that organizations were looking for condensed information about how blockchain can best apply to their needs. And we identified that they didn't want um, like decision makers, for example, were not interested in reading full academic articles. They wanted um, like a three to five page summary that they could bring back in simple language to talk to different uh, other decision makers in their organization. We did a, an informal uh, survey of, the, of this community to determine which areas seemed to be the areas for which organizations were asking the most questions, which, which uses seemed to be the hottest, most pertinent. So with the use, we formed, um, kind of an informal subgroup uh, to put together some use cases um, and to, to educate and inform in simple language about, uh, I'm trying to remember the specific use cases. I thought that was credentialing one. I, I can't remember, I'm sorry that I can't remember all the use cases, but to, um, but to put these together under the Hyperledger umbrella and make them widely available on the website. Yeah, uh, and well, so, and, and I think uh, th those use cases were, uh, uh, to your point, uh, a drug supply chain, uh, yes. medical records, and then credentialing uh, was, was queued, but I don't know if we had someone that was going to work that. Perhaps not. And then, uh, and then the payer space, uh, and uh, again, that's something that we're still sort of looking for a lead on that, but uh, yeah, and so just to sort of segue from, from the work that you sort of kicked off with to the work that uh, Erica and her team are doing, uh, I, 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 as I mentioned, uh, there was, uh, we had a meeting uh, about two weeks ago. Uh, I know Dennis Cuskin uh, was involved in that, and so uh, we have a couple of use case uh, examples. Uh, there's a UML diagram that circulated uh, to, to try to quantify uh, at least one of the use cases, I think it was drug supply chain, so we're, we are again moving forward, uh, which is great to see. And uh, to, to your point, Wendy, yeah, this is something that we've come to realize is some, something that uh, our, um, our, those folks that are involved or un, are interested in using blockchain technologies really want uh, an example, something that they can sort of get their heads around to understand you know, where the value for blockchain technologies uh, and specifically DLT happen to be. And so it, it just turns out that use cases uh, happen to be a good sort of vehicle for uh, communicating that kind of information. Oh, absolutely. And I, I work for a blockchain company now and we have created use case documents for many of the popular features that we offer. We, um, for the company that I work for, we had narrowed them down to a double-sided page um, but we found that was so popular because organizations wanted a simple but straightforward explanation of how this technology can apply to a specific issue that they're dealing with right now. And one of the 
factors that we found to be very valuable was the uh, strategic value itself, um, I guess to be redundant. And uh, to explain to them how they can, where, where is it value added? And for that, um, we reference a lot of the materials produced by the World Economic Forum. And for those of you who are not familiar with it, it produces just excellent white papers about um, decision-making about blockchain, um, some fantastic articles to help uh, organizations determine uh, return on investment, and also how to show and present the drivers, the value drivers to an organization. So anyway, I, I am not allowed by my employer to lead any initiatives for Hyperledger, which is somewhat of a competitor, um, but I will remain active in this space so that I can advise on any experiences that will help this group. Excellent, yeah, and, and again, thanks Wendy for kicking off that, uh, that use case team. Uh, again, it is it is something that there's there's tremendous value in, and so uh, yeah, you're right. We're just realizing that there are folks that just are have expectations. Uh, to your point, you make a very good point. It's an easily digestible uh, tool, uh, and uh, as much as people can gain a lot out of academic papers, it's it doesn't happen as often as it ought to. Uh, and so these use case documents that are a little bit more. Uh, uh, sort of focused and maybe easier to read uh, seem to be the right way to go. So again, thank you for that. Yeah, just a, a question to Wendy: Is there the the links to those to the documents and the the outline on the on our wiki on the healthcare wiki? Um, no, um, but I can provide them to uh, anyone who's interested. Um, you could just email uh, e email me or send me uh, a. A comment in the chat box. Um, the I'm not even sure this is embarrassing to say, but as the company that I work for is updating its website, uh, I don't even think we have them published on our own website. So, uh, but I, I'm happy to to share these with other organizations. Um, as my while I'm not allowed to formally work for projects um, for Hyperledger, um, that. Um, the CEO of the company I work for, Burst IQ, believes that the rising tide lifts all ships. And as blockchain is an emerging technology in the healthcare space, we all really need to work together for successful communication and to improve the reputation of the term blockchain among healthcare organizations. So, so that's the best description of context under which I am operating. So yeah, please. Please send me some information. I'm happy to connect with you. Great, thanks. And uh, I'm just putting in the uh, uh, in the chat window uh, a link to the to to our our Google Drive, which is where the the HC Sig uh, use case development team has their documents stored. So there is some stuff that's there that'll be interesting and useful for those that have an interest uh, in even perhaps joining this team. Uh, and again, Erica uh, typically is on this call. Uh, she's she's leading that now, uh, but it it might be interesting for anyone who wants to pursue this to take a look and see what we've got going, uh, and then of course Erica will be uh, driving some future uh, meetings going forward. So uh, again, thanks thanks Wendy. Uh, yeah, and you know uh, Wendy has been phenomenal uh, up until <laughs> up until we, you you moved over to Burst IQ, and and understandably there's a business case to consider there, but you are really phenomenal, uh, and so You're they're so very, kind. very lucky to have you there. Okay, uh, we, uh, so I, for old business, uh, I generally uh, keep these uh, links uh, sort of refreshed. Uh, I have uh, basically healthcare funding opportunities that I post here. Uh, in general, for folks uh, that ha are, are part of smaller businesses, uh, you probably want to be aware of what are called SBIRs and STTRs, SIBR uh, 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 or a SITR. SIBR uh, is a small business innovation research, uh, effectively a grant or, uh, 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 yeah, we'll call it a grant. Um, whereas a small business technology transfer tends to work with a small business associated with an academic institution. And uh, these are funding opportunities uh, for small businesses. And I think the definition of small business is still, I believe, 150 persons or fewer. Um, and so uh, I could tell you when I worked uh, primarily in the DOD space, uh, and this was uh, before blockchain, 
uh, we would respond to uh, SIBRs and sitters periodically, and it's a great opportunity to, to get involved with the organization of choice. Uh, because the work that I used to do in DD it tended to be more military. Uh, what I'm providing here is uh, a couple of different institutions that tend to be focused on healthcare, uh, specifically health and human services. Uh, th these are these are, with the exception of UNICEF. Uh, HHS and NIH, which is the National Institute of Health, both of these are US-based organizations. So uh, I have links coming off of those first two that'll take you to uh, uh, current uh, funding opportunities. Um, uh, um, Stephen, uh, through the uh, Healthcare Interoperative Subgroup, uh, he and his uh, small business uh, did respond to, a, a, I believe it was a cyber opportunity, and so uh, so these things do work and they, they do exist. Uh, for the UNICEF uh, Innovation Fund, that one's a little bit different. That has, tends to be uh, more of a global opportunity. Uh, I believe, uh, uh, and they do have a specific blockchain program. Uh, so they are looking for folks, uh, again, small businesses uh, that are doing work in, in, the, in the space uh, as it relates to blockchain technologies. Uh, if I recall, the qualifications for an innovation fund through UNICEF is that you have to be a small business uh, and you also have to have a, a, uh, either a product or a proof of concept uh, completed and, and uh, demonstrable. And so uh, if you are interested in pursuing that, take a look at the details of the link. Again, the link is in the agenda. Uh, but it is an, a very interesting opportunity for anyone uh, with uh, that's part of a smaller business. And again, to me, a small business, 150 people doesn't seem very small, but I think that's those are the qualifications. So it's a fairly large company for being small. Um, anyway, uh, feel free to take a parse on that. Uh, and if you do come across something interesting, uh, of, uh, I, I'd, I'd urge you to share that uh, through the rest of the, the team here. Uh, and feel free to contact the, the whole of uh, the HCSIC membership if something uh, really compelling comes across uh, your desk by way of these links. Uh, any comments or thoughts for these funding opportunities? Okay, and I'm just mindful of time. We've, we've got about 10 minutes left. Um, so, so we do have our, uh, our membership uh, survey results are out. Uh, I have a link, again, uh, out of the agenda uh, directly to the survey results. Uh, feel free to take a parse on that. Uh, in general, I would say there were really not a whole lot of surprises. Uh, we do this every year, and so year over year, what I'm looking for are patterns or trends that, that are really going to drive what our future focus is as a special interest group. Um, I, would, I would say just in general that uh, Maybe we have a little bit of an uptick in, uh, in interests in self-sovereign identity uh, relative to past years. Uh, the, the primary interested, uh, pri primary interest, and there should be no surprise, in platforms is, it continues to be Fabric and uh, Indy and Sawtooth. I think Indy and Sawtooth flipped. Uh, I think the, the number three spot used to be Indy. It's now uh, the number two spot and Sawtooth vice versa. Um, about half of our respondents are out of North America um, and uh, then Europe and then Asia. I believe that hasn't changed for, for quite a while. Uh, familiarity with blockchain is, is about in the three to five uh, year range, which again is probably not, not too, too surprising. Uh, the one very interesting the thing that did come out of it was about three, quarter of our, three quarters of our respondents uh, when asked if they would be interested in uh, blockchain technology presentations or discussions that didn't necessarily uh, focus on the Hyperledger brand per se, uh, they said, yeah, I, I would have no problem if we presented something that was not necessarily specific to Hyperledger. Um, and I'll share with you sort of an anecdote. Uh, I used to uh, run uh, here uh, out of the Pacific Northwest, uh, a Hyperledger uh, meetup. And uh, about a year or two ago, uh, and we had about a thousand, probably about a thousand members at the time, um, uh, we had asked the same question, and I was very surprised that for all people that responded, it was 100% that said, yeah, we, <laughs> we, we are more interested in blockchain technologies and less about hyperledger specifically. So uh, what, what this really tells me is in both instances, 
we are still in a learning phase. We're still looking to, to get an education in understanding blockchain technologies at a general level. Uh, and so I, I, I'm happy to continue to do so. We tend to generally, by virtue of the fact this, this is a hyperledger special interest group, we tend to focus on hyperledger uh, frameworks and tools. Uh, but uh, on occasion, we relax those rules. We've had some speakers in the past that have presented that uh, have not necessarily used uh, Hyperledger frameworks. And I think I'm okay with that. And I think this feedback uh, out of this most recent survey uh, tends to be in support of that. Uh, so uh, I would guess maybe perhaps that was probably the only real surprise. And to be honest, for me, it wasn't a surprise because I, I, I was, uh, I hadn't kind of known about it, at least regionally here in the Pacific Northwest, that uh, membership here uh, uh, didn't, wasn't very, uh, 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 critical about using the Hyperledger uh, uh, frameworks and tools. So, um, so how does that inform us going forward? I, you know, again, I, we've already been doing this. Uh, just knowing that there's there's not a there's not a a, a, a specific requirement to use Hyperledger uh, stacks. So uh, we'll continue to do that going forward. We have some great ideas going forward for topics. Uh, and uh, I'm happy to, to facilitate that to the extent uh, that we can do that. Um, and then um, in general, I think the feedback was, was positive and, and thanks to anyone uh, and everyone who participated in the survey. The value of the survey is important because it, like I said, it does inform us going forward on, on where our focus uh, ought to be. And so I think uh, at least what, what I get out of this survey is that we are continuing to do the right thing for the sake of, of membership. Um, if you haven't had a chance to review the survey res results, feel free to do so. There, what I presented here is uh, is just you know just a all small fraction. You can certainly get into the details and, and parse uh, at at a at a deeper granularity uh, in the survey itself. It's a very very complete survey. It's about five or six uh, pages long or so, um, and uh, it, very interesting just in general. Uh, as far as uh, regularity uh, or, or cadence for meetings and time, uh, the takeaway suggests that the time frame is about right. The uh, biweekly uh, cadence is about right, and so we'll continue to do that. Uh, it still seems that email is probably uh, the best way to communicate, uh, as well as these, these uh, teleconferences or video conferences. Uh, and as much as uh, it, it, it pains me, uh, we still don't really uh, use chat very often. And in our case, it's Rocket Chat. Um, I, and I'd love to find a way to, to make better use of our chat facility, but it just doesn't seem to be uh, necessarily in the cards. And so I'll continue to push that just at a personal level because that, that to me is interesting that we can do real-time chat. It just just doesn't seem like we've, we've gotten uh, a real need behind that. So it seems like email and then uh, conferencing seems to be the right way to go. Okay, uh, any comments or, or thoughts uh, regarding the survey and the results? I, uh, can I ask just a quick question? Yeah, sure, go ahead, Ken. I, I, so, sorry, yeah, I, um, I wanted to ask, because I'm making these proof of concepts, for example, like the patient consent, group. Uh, I'm also interested in uh, non-hyperledger blockchain platforms as well. So would it be permitted to not only have a fabric version, a sorted version, but some other non-hyperledger versions like Ethereum version, IOTA version, NEM version, such? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I would, I personally, I would encourage it uh, and I would defend that uh, within the organization here. Uh, as you know, we are open community, open source, uh, not for profit, and, and the whole purpose, and this is again backed up by their survey results, and again, this is uh, fairly well known, at least to myself, uh, we are st still in a learning phase, and that's in part the reason why I was interested to, to have you talk a little bit more or present even uh, about the differences between fabric uh, and sawtooth, because you know, we are just simply not at a level of, uh, of real understanding uh, or even technical prowess to know what the right framework is, whether it's even Hyperledger or something else. Uh, at a personal level, I'd love to hear more about IOTA. Uh, that's that's sort of another favorite of mine. Uh, I'd be interested in understanding more about, you know, uh, 
how Ethereum sort of maps. And so, yeah, I'd, I'd love to encourage that and I, I will absolutely defend your decision to do this, to, to do so. Thank you very much. Yeah, why I hope is that we don't hear much from IOTA. Um, they're, they're off the radar completely in the US and yet they're like all over Europe right now. Yeah, well, uh, it's very, very shortly. Uh, so I, I believe that's where they, they spun out of. Uh, I believe they have a lot of support. I think the, the corporation of choice was Bosch, if I recall. It's been, it's been a year or two since I tracked them. Uh, and it just never caught on. I think there was some uh, initial pushback that the IOTA team uh, came across as, uh, I don't know, maybe a bit arrogant. Uh, maybe that was, that's a bit of a strong word, but th their attempt or their approach was very, it came across as maybe cavalier. That's probably a better word. And so I think they lost a certain amount of credibility, at least initially. Uh, part of their protocols were brand new. Part of their security and encryption was brand new. And then I think rather than using uh, existing technologies, they said, well, we're going to go do it our own way. And that, that seemed to be uh, an, something of, a, of an affront to the community. Uh, that said, uh, for me personally, uh, I think IOTA has some very interesting uh, approaches that I suspect will probably scale better over time. And, um, and uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to go, go too deep on that. Because uh, it's been about a year since I've been uh, reading up on them, and uh, to your point, Jonathan, yeah, they they seem to be very quiet. Um, so uh, and yeah, and so I don't know why they really haven't uh, taken hold necessarily here in the U.S., but uh, they have an, a very interesting product. So uh, we may want to find a way to engage IOTA folks and have them present here. Just out of curiosity. Can I just add uh, a quick update for IOTA? Sure. So originally, IOTA started off with something called a coordinator. So in the same fashion that Fabric had an endorser and everybody moans about, oh, you know, it's supposed to be decentralized and distributed. And so uh, IOTA are now coming up with some updates where they're moving away from this coordinator function. So what coordinator does, it sends, it's like a, uh, it sends every few blocks some sort of signal, some um, some secure data, uh, and creates a checkpoint, a snapshot. Okay, they call it a milestone. So, uh, uh, only having one coordinator to do this is somewhat of a bit, a bit of a security problem. So, they are moving away from that, and so maybe they've been spending some time, obviously, uh, developing the software, and are about to announce some new software soon. Oh, excellent. Okay, thanks, Kent. Yeah. Uh, so it sounds like maybe they're they're continuing to to sort of refine their their position. And uh, you know, again, I'm I'm very interested because their architecture is very different uh, than a pure blockchain uh, or DLT. And so it'll be interesting to see uh, how they how they sort of position themselves going forward. Yeah. So Dominic and I came out of the same hackathon. Uh, Dominic, the founder of Schneider, in uh, 2015. And so. Uh, and all, everyone was raving about their approach, but then he sort of dropped off the radar. So it's yeah, yeah. Uh, well, if if you want to re-engage them, uh, it may be interesting to to have them come speak uh, here. If they have a healthcare context or someone that's focused on healthcare using IOTA, it'd be really interesting to learn a little bit more about their technology. I will be building an IOTA version, so it, you will be the first to know. <laughs> okay, thank you, Kent. Well, good. Excellent. Well, good. Uh, okay, well, uh, we are just at the top of the hour. I wanted to get into a uh, uh, coronavirus discussion uh, that there was, I, I believe it passed last night. Uh, I believe President Trump signed this, uh, this uh, bill through. Uh, we'll hold that for, for our next get together. Uh, but the, what, I'd, what I'd like to put in here, here is the notion that with these, uh, this cor uh, coronavirus uh, outbreak, how do we respond to it? And, and I'd like to have an open discussion about uh, some of the ideas that, that come out of this. There is uh, potentially some funding that, that will come out of it that may be something that touches uh, us as a community. And so I'd like to have a further discussion about that. But we'll have to hold that until next time and uh, as we're just coming up to the top of the hour. Okay, uh, well, thanks everyone, I appreciate it. Uh, apologies again for, for not being able to, to get the screen sharing working. I'll, I'll see if I can get that squared away uh, for next time. And uh, until then, have a great weekend and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you, Rich. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, bye-bye.